Please stand for the enjoy of your people. Be still. Greetings to all of you this morning. Welcome to uh, our visitors today. Uh, are there any announcements that need made at this time? Let's join in the call to worship. God has set this day before us. The day of our heart. of years in which we loved and learned and served. A span of years in which we loved and learned and served. God has set God's seal upon our hearts so that we might live fully in be love. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn this morning is in God, our help in ages past. Page 370, Lord.
is a God of grace and peace, of forgiveness and compassion, of life and hope. Faithful and just, the Holy One hears the cries of your heart and welcomes you back home. Friends, believe this good news and be at peace. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, may these gifts given this day be pleasing in your sight, and may they be used that others would come to know your saving grace. In your holy name, amen. Well, good morning. How's everybody today? Okay, well, um, today we're, we're going to carry on. We, we started talking about Joshua last week with, with sight and faith. And this week, we're going to talk about Joshua. And you've heard the song, right? Joshua, love the battle of Jericho. Jericho. You guys going to sing it? Yeah. No, they're not going to sing it. But anyway, let me tell you how this battle was fought. God said to Joshua, he said, take your men, have seven priests with seven horns, take your army, and march around the walls of Jericho one time. That sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? But then he said, do that for six more days. And then he said, on the seventh day, have your men shout. You know what happened? What happened in the song? Walls came tumbling down. Now, doesn't that seem silly? Have you ever known a general that fought a war by just saying, march around and shout? It seems silly, doesn't it? And what I want to say to you today is God sometimes tells us to do silly stuff, right? Stuff like, well, let me see. Can you think of anything? Stuff like being nice to someone who's mean to us. To love our enemies. To do stuff like that. Why does he tell us to do those things? It's for our good, for his glory, right? And then we can look at things the way he sees things. Instead of, by sight, how we see things, we're going to be able to see how he sees things. And it's just better for us, isn't it? And what happens then we get victory is ours. If you were playing basketball and you knew you were going to win, you could just relax and enjoy it, right? So in this life, remember, whatever God tells you to do, when we're obedient and we trust him through faith, victory is ours. We win. Isn't that, a, isn't that nice to know? So relax and enjoy your life. All right? Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the victory that's already ours. Even though we might not see it yet or feel it, through faith we trust you. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Let's pray. Father, what a wonderful day to worship you. The beautiful sunshine, it's, it's nice and cool in here. And, and we, we just praise you for the beautiful day that you've given us. And to make it even more special, we need to worship you together as the body of Christ, as the body of believers. And so we're just grateful this day that we serve a God who is so attentive to our needs, that knows what's going on in our lives, a God that cares, that cared enough to send his only son that we might have life. Heavenly Father, we have so much to be thankful for. First and foremost, for you, and your goodness and your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness and your love. We, we just thank you this day that we're together worshiping you. But Father, we know that life can sometimes be difficult. So as we list these people, we lift those who need healing. And we ask for your special healing upon each of these people we, we think of, of Leslie, who's been through a lot, of, and this doesn't sound good. Also, I lift my brother-in-law, Ike, who's having surgery tomorrow. 
I think if there's people that have been dealing with extreme heat, and we pray that you would keep them safe. We also lift Joni to you, and Doris, and Heather, now that she has a cast on, that soon her hand would be healed. We also lift Jeff, and Donna, and Sherry, and Nancy, and Sandy. Heavenly Father, you know their needs. You know what they need most. So we ask that you would touch their lives this day. We're also grateful for birthdays. When people complain about getting older, uh, what an honor and privilege it is. Another year to serve you, and so we thank you for that, Father. We're also grateful that Jeremy and Michelle and the kids made it to Florida, and we pray that they will come safely back soon. We're grateful that Patty Jo is here worshiping with us this day. We're grateful that Jen got to go to a wedding yesterday and just got to go out and do some like normal stuff. And so we pray for continued healing there as well. We also are grateful for the camps that the, the kids have gotten to go to in this past week and, and they had a great time and we're thankful for that. Father, we come to this place each and every week out of deep desire to worship you, out of deep desire to praise and honor you. But not just that, we look forward to being here, to being with the family that you have given us. We just thank you so much that we have people here to support us in our struggles and our difficulties and share in our joys as well. And so we praise you for that this day. And when we come, come here, most of all, we remember our Savior, Jesus the Christ. What he did for each of us. We remember the sacrifice. We remember the miracles. We remember the lessons. And we also remember the prayer that he said to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, our hymn of preparation, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. It's found on 608 of the hymnal, or it's on, your, on the screen if you are able, please stand.
scripture for this morning's message comes from Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 20. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we look at your words, help us to understand what they have to do with us. Where is the connection? What does it have to do with us? Heavenly Father, open our minds that we can understand that the message that was written so long ago applies to us today. We thank you for your words. Amen. Joshua chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. Let us listen for the words of the Lord. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram, ram's horns, in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, Advance. March around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the army, do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times, the same in the same manner, except on that day they circled the city seven times, the seventh time around the city, around when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in your house shall be spared, because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things, so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed, and every everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. This is God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Now, as we listen to that song that Sue played, Joshua. How's it go? Jericho, 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 Jericho. Yeah, um, as, as we listen to that, um, here, here's what, what 
prophet's claim that he fought that battle. He didn't lift a finger. <laughs> he didn't lose a man. He didn't even have a strategy for battle. God won the victory at Jericho. It was God who secured <laughs> that victory. And so I wonder, how many of you have ever found yourself in a similar situation? We've heard God's promises, and we find ourselves facing a wall. Obstacle right in front of us. It's a, we can't get over it, we can't get through it, we can't get under it. It's blocking us. We're facing that wall. What was the message that the Lord sent to Joshua when he was facing that wall? Does he send us messages when we're facing those immovable walls? Do we hear from him in the same way? You might say, well, what, are, what do you mean by walls? What are those walls? The walls are obstacles that are insurmountable. There's something that on our own that we cannot overcome. We cannot defeat. They, the walls defeat us. Or at least we think they do. And today I want to look at three words that will help us overcome those walls or those obstacles in our lives. <clears throat> now the African antelope, I learned about it this week, it can jump 10 feet high and as far as 30 feet. But yet when it's kept in the zoo, they can keep it in a fence that's only three feet high. You might ask yourself, why? Well, it just happens that the antelope will not jump where it cannot see where its feet are going to land. So it'll stay in that cage. It'll stay in that wall. And we can be just like the African antelope, can't we? Sometimes we're afraid to take that leap of faith. We prefer living by sight and not by faith. And you remember last week we talked about sight and faith, especially in the children's chat. Sight is what we can see. Faith is what God sees. So we need the eyes of God to have faith so that we can see what God sees. But sometimes we prefer that comfort of living by sight, not by faith. Instead of believing in God's word, we believe what we can see and what we can touch. You know what scripture tells us about those things? They're temporary. We can see and touch. It's all temporary stuff. So as we look at our scripture today, we realize how much better it is to trust God Let's look at verses 1 and 2. Now the gates of Jericho were secure, securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went in, no one went out, and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and his fighting men. And the first word that I think about as we think about obstacles or walls in our lives is this, believe. You know, we hear this, seeing is believing, but it's different for people of faith. Believing means seeing. Believe and you will see. In verse two, the Lord told Joshua that victory was his. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. What's funny is the battle hadn't taken place yet. Nothing had happened yet, but God already saw the victory because he knew victory had been won because God won the victory. He was telling him to believe victory is yours because it was. Believe that it was as good as done. Believe that victory was guaranteed. Folks, in spite of what you see, do you believe that God will deliver you? Do you believe that God can do what he says he can do? What is the wall that you're facing this day? 
Is it the wall of discouragement? Persecution? The wall of financial problems? The wall of health problems? God can help you overcome any of these problems. Doesn't mean in life that we won't ever have problems. Life's tough. We all know how difficult life can be. It won't always be sunny. Life won't always be easy. But what it means is this. Ultimately, you will overcome the struggles of this life. Ultimately, you will overcome the difficulties in this life. Eventually, victory will be yours. But first, you have to believe that God can deliver you. You have to believe that God will deliver you, and eventually you will see. <coughs> now there was a tightrope walker walking over Niagara Falls, I believe it was one of the Walendas, and as he went on the tightrope, he had a wheelbarrow in front of him, and he went the whole way across as people cheered. And then he said to the people, he said, do you believe that I can make it back across. And they said, we believe, we believe. Do you believe that I can go the whole way pushing this wheelbarrow? We believe you can do it, we believe you can do it. He said, then get in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at verses three through five. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of rams, ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. And the second word, I see that to overcome the struggles and difficulties in your life is believe. Believe. No, trust. How about trust? We already believe. Let's trust. Believing that God can deliver you is one thing, but trusting that he will do it is altogether different. It's like it's altogether different when he pushes that wheelbarrow across, right? But when he wants you to get in, do you really trust him to do it? <clears throat> that makes a difference, doesn't it? So after we believe in God, now the question is, do we trust him enough to let go? I mean, to hand everything over to God. You know, every day I pray for my children, and I hand them over to God. I put them in God's hands because I say, they're better in your hands. Because I know he loves them more than I do. I know he loves them more, and he wants what's best for them. And so I place them, my children, in the only hands I would ever place them in, and that's the hands of God, say, God, I trust you. I trust him to do that. We must believe enough to trust God with our lives and the lives of those people we love. With all that we have, with all that we are, we need to trust God this day. We need to trust God that whatever happens in our lives is God's plan. No matter what happens is God's plan. No matter what happens is God's plan. We must trust him enough to do what he tells us to do. No matter how hopeless things look, no matter how absurd some of the things that we're called to do seems, no matter how difficult it is, we must trust God enough to do what he tells us to do. Now there's a Chinese fable, and a, a tiger had captured a fox, and he was gonna eat him for lunch. And so he got ready to, to eat his lunch. The fox said to him, wait, you can't eat, you can't eat, eat me, heaven has declared that I am king of the jungle. And that I'm to be feared above all other creatures in the jungle. And he said, if you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you, follow me. 
So as he went through the jungle, all the animals, when they saw the fox, <coughs> they shied away. They moved back out of fear. One by one, they cowered and slithered away. And finally, the tiger said, wow, you're right. You are the king of the jungle. Everyone fears you. I won't eat you. I won't eat you today. Let's look at verse 10. But Joshua had commanded the army, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. The third word is obey. We want to overcome the obstacles in our life, obey. I can't imagine what Joshua would be thinking. I mean, a fighting man, I said, don't, don't, lift, don't lift an arm up, just, just walk around. Then he shout, and he trusted God. Even when God, what God was telling Joshua seemed not to make sense. Joshua believed God, he trusted God, he obeyed God. Why did Joshua obey? Well, it's kind of like the tiger. You see, what the tiger didn't realize in that story was that nobody feared the fox. They feared who had the fox's back, which was the tiger. That's why Joshua should have been feared that day. God had his back. So my advice for you today is when you are facing a wall, make sure that God has your back. Make sure he's there with you. Even when God asks you to do things that don't make any sense, never question God, just obey. Things like, as I told the children, love your enemy, turn the other cheek, treat others, even <clears throat> though they're mean to you, treat them the way you want to be treated. Things like, do good to those who persecute you. If a man asks for your shirt, give him your coat too. Forgive the unforgivable. Those things seem crazy, don't they? Those things are not easy to do. They don't seem to make any sense. But my advice is obey anyway. Obey God. Mountains will crumble and walls will fall when we obey God. We don't always understand. We don't have to. We don't have to. But if we obey, victory is ours. You see, the battle's been already fought. It's already won. Victory is ours. And we need to understand that the victory will be more than we could have ever hoped for. Better than we could ever realize, ever dream of. <coughs> victory is ours in spite of how things might look. God is at work in each of your lives, even when you can't feel it, even when you don't sense it. God is at work in your life. Obey God and trust that whatever you do in the name of the Lord, it will prosper. It will be for your good and for his glory. Follow God's plan. Obey without question. Do it for God's glory. And the walls in, the, in your life will come tumbling down. One by one, they'll fall. What, down the, what brought down the wall of Jericho? It was the power of God. You see, God spoke the world into existence with just words. Just one word. So he can surely handle our problems, our struggles. It's the same power that will bring down the walls in your life today. Now in the 1970s, Dan Fouts was quarterback of the San Diego Chargers. Yes, people know that. You guys remember the name? Yeah, they always tried to say he was better than Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> Nobody believed that. Well, anyway, it was this one game, and he was just having a terrible game. It was just awful. And there were only two minutes left, and they were losing 14 to nothing, 
And finally, the coach had had enough, and he pulled fouls. Pulled him out of the game. And the backup quarterback was Bobby Douglas, and he was so excited to get in. And he went running out, charging out to the field. And then all of a sudden, he stopped. And he turned around, and he went back, and he went to the coach. He said, Coach, do you want me to just tie this up, or do we want to win it? <laughs> what a great statement. What confidence he had. Do we have the same confidence when it comes to God? To obey him. To trust him. Joshua was given a command by the Lord. He believed. He trusted. And he obeyed. And God gave Joshua a great victory. He can do the same for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that no matter what comes our way, you've got it. You can handle it. Maybe there's things going on that we don't like in our lives. And maybe we wish that things were different. But you've got it. Victory is ours. Each person here, say to yourself, victory is mine. We're so grateful this day that we have a God that's done everything so that we can have all eternity with him. If that is a victory, I don't know what is. So I just thank you, Lord, this day for the victory that is ours. The battle's been fought. It's won. We can't lose. So we praise you this day, and we thank you. In the name of your Son, our Savior and Lord, amen. This time our closing hymn, Battle Hymn of the Republic. That's what it says. What do you got? Abide with me. I'm just telling you what my bulletin says. Somebody must not have fixed it. <laughs> to talk to her. That was I just read my, okay, I'll read the screen. Yeah, I go with the screen. It says, Abide with me, page 500.
God. What would have happened? We would have been sitting out there, and if they attacked, they probably would have lost the battle. They would have lost men. It wouldn't have been good. So in our lives, as we have walls before us, hand them over to God. So I said before, there's no better place to put all your worries, all your concerns, all your loved ones than in the hands of God. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.